Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. You're on the Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast. I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Dante Leverock to the show, Sligo Rovers player and also Bermuda International. Yes, Bermuda. And they qualified for the Gold Cup with a big win, a 3-1 victory over Dominican Republic during the week. Now, Dante has just landed back in Sligo. They face Derry City in the SSE or Trissy League on Friday. And he's joining us on Sky for Chat. Dante, how are you, sir? Hi, Jamie. How are you doing? I'm great. Yourself? I'm doing good. Doing good. So, you had an amazing story to tell us. Tell us about this win... 3-1 and the celebrations and the photos and you're from a tiny country Bermuda just 65,000 people you know is the population there and you've qualified for the Gold Cup you're going to be playing against teams like Mexico, USA, Costa Rica this summer Yeah uh, it's a massive achievement for us uh, like you said we're such a small nation um, I think probably the smallest nation to ever qualify for the Gold Cup so, you know, it's a big achievement. I'm very proud of the team. I'm proud to be the captain and proud to be a part of history. Uh, it was a, a very big celebration. We had a, a couple hundred uh, Bermudians who came down to Dominican. My family was there as well. So to, to share that moment with them was just awesome. Yeah, I suppose, you know, for people who are listening and watching who don't know too much about you, before we speak more about the football, just explain to us who you are and also how you've managed to become the captain of Bermuda and, as we just said, led him to the Gold Cup. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm just an average guy. You know, I wanted to play football from young. From five years old, I knew I wanted to be a professional footballer. Um, you know, I played in Bermuda and, you know, just traveling with youth teams going away you know, to Europe and the USA. I ended up going to school in England, in London, uh, studying sports science there. And I, that's where I was playing, like, semi-professional as well. And after that, I signed, uh, after I fin finished and I graduated, I signed up in the, uh, the USL in the United States, and it's just going from there. Um, I was involved with the Bermuda national team from uh, two uh two seasons ago of the World Cup qualifier, so I've been a couple years now and I'm one of the older players so it just shows how you know young our team is and just you know the amazing achievement that what we have accomplished so um, I just recently became the captain as well so that's always an honor you know something I've always wanted to do as well yeah and we've just seen an image of, of the team there in a lovely pink type kit as well uh, th there we are again explain to me how the game went and I suppose the feelings at the end we're going to see images in a moment of the celebrations afterwards like this is an amazing achievement for your team and it was a really good win in the end 3-1 yeah you, we didn't have the best start uh, they scored early I think it was in like the second minute it was sort of like a, a fluke goal it was, he, the, the player was running down the line and he just I don't know if it was a cross or a shot but it went in so um, you know we didn't panic there, which, you know, was was very mature of us as a team. Um, you know, I just try to keep the players, you know, grounded and say, look, you know, I, I feel we can score in this game. And we, to be fair, we, you know, we built it, uh, our confidence in the game. And um, I think we won comfortably. We could have had more, to be honest. So, you know, they're, they're a very good team. They have some good players. But I, I was always confident that we, we would beat them. Sum up for me the feelings after the game. I love images of teams once the final whistle is blown and those few moments of celebration on the pitch and then you get time in the changing room and I'm sure the music is on and people are having a dance and a sing and, and really, really happy. And that's why we are involved in football and why we play football is, is for those moments and you guys managed to do that the other night. Yeah, man, I, I'm not going to lie. I cried at the end. You know, I just went down to my knees and, you know, I cried and, you know, my players embraced me and we were all just running around embracing each other, hugging, uh, you know, a couple of tears, obviously. But, you know, it was I, I really can't explain the feeling. I was just overwhelmed. Like, it didn't feel real. It felt like a dream. Um, you know, I ran up and jumped in the stands, hugging my mom, my nephew, you know, my girlfriend. It's just, yeah, it, it was an amazing feeling. I, I wish I could go back to feel it again, but I guess that's what it's about, just to have that memory now and, now to move on and you know I'm back in Ireland so now I have to sort of refocus on you know this task here but I'll never forget that feeling never yeah unbelievable stuff and uh, the Gold Cup it's going to be the 15th edition of it it's a competition that's contested between uh, countries from Central North American and the Caribbean region and it's going to take place uh, in the Rose Bowl in LA on the 15th of June which is the same time of the League of Ireland break Dante so if the Sligo Rovers fans are listening or watching 
you might miss one game, but you're certainly not going to miss you know a huge chunk because this competition is on at the time when the League of Ireland is on its break. So you won't get a break yourself, but you're not going to miss too many games. Yeah, exactly, and that's always important. You know, um, first of all, I'm a Sligo player. You know, I have to, um, you know, I have an obligation to my club. So I'm very happy that. You know that is during the break, and you know I won't miss a, a lot of games, so I'm very happy about that as well. Okay, Dante. So from the international to the club, tell us how you ended up at Sligo Rovers because Liam Buckley is a new manager, and he's added in you know some local players from Sligo, signed some from the other uh, League of Ireland clubs, and also has brought in a couple of players from a little bit further afield, including yourself. So how did you end up signing for Sligo? Uh, so uh, I actually got in contact with. Uh, I got. Uh, Coach Buckley's uh, information from one of his ex-players, uh, Jake Keegan. He played with St. Pat. Yeah. He played under uh, Liam Buckley. And I was just, you know, I was friends with him, talking to him. And, you know, he mentioned the League of Ireland to me. And I, he's, he mentioned that, you know, I, I could do well there and I can enjoy it. So I went from there. I was in contact with Liam and, you know, he was pleased with, you know, my, my highlights, my resume and things of that nature. And it just really just went quickly from there. And um, I'm, I'm ha very happy here. Playing under him, he's a good manager. You know, he likes to play football. So, you know, we're just going from there, just working hard and hopefully have a good season with Sligo. Yes, I love that. And you can tell, Dante, you've played in America. Coach Buckley, uh, very uh, uncommon for uh, League of Ireland players to call their managers coach, but Coach Buckley is something, or, or Coach whoever is, is something that's very common in America. Do you, do you actually call him that to his face, Coach Bucko? Yeah, sometimes, actually. And I, I've noticed that, you know, now I call him Gaffer as well. So I just, I've been in England and America, so sometimes I'm, I'm just switching up my scenes. But yeah. <laughs> Nice. And you mentioned that he liked to see your highlights and it's something now that's you know, really common in football and I know some League of Ireland players from here have moved to America and, and other places and you know, a highlights reel or, or a DVD has been a massive massive help to them and I'm sure it was a massive help to you that your agent or whoever got in contact was able to, to send a video and, and send your CV and, and Liam was able to see what you're made of. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're in the age of technology now so everything's you know, digital. You know, to have highlights and then you have the Insta stat you know, stuff as well. So it really helps just for for any player trying to move abroad or, you know, go to different parts of the world. It's very important, I believe. Yeah, we're actually going to speak uh, to the man who is in charge of Instat in Ireland later on in this podcast as well mm -hmm. to tell us a little more about that. So when you decide, you speak to Jay Keegan and, and you decide that the League of Ireland is, is an option for you, what happens next in terms of the process of, of that first conversation with Jake to actually making contact with Sligo, sending your video and, and eventually signing? Yeah, so, you know, I got my contact information, then, I, you know, I reached out to the manager, and um, I know he took a couple of days, and he said, look, you know, we like what we see, we want to offer you this, and I took a couple of days, went over with my agent, and it really just went quickly after that. Um, I did obviously did my research about the League of Ireland, and I see that, you know, it was a very, very competitive league. And, you know, I wanted to test myself from being in Estonia last year, obviously playing at a higher level. And a big factor for me was also being close to England. Um, I have family there as well. So logistics wise, it was just a, a good option for me. Yeah, because I was just looking at the clubs you've played for and you've played in a couple of places around the world, in Bermuda, in the UK and, and also in America and some of the names of the, the teams you've played for. You played for the Dandy Town Hornets, the Bermuda Hogs, the Staines Town, <laughs> Leatherhead, Harrisburg, City Islanders, Isingston, I think it's called, the Narva Trans and Sligo Rover. So you're fairly well travelled. Yeah, I'm well travelled. You know, I don't mind, you know, trying new places. So, you know, I think football is all about, you know, meeting new people, you know, learning different cultures and things of that nature. But hopefully, you know, now, you know, if we have a good season, I could just become a, a bit more settled now in Ireland. Yeah, and your last club was in Estonia, of course, as well. Yeah. How would you kind of look back on your career so far? You're 26, so, you're, you're, you know, you've still got another probably six, seven, eight, nine years left of, of hopefully playing professional football as well. And, you know, from 2011 to now, you, you've been at six or seven different clubs in loads of different countries and also played international football. So how would you kind of look back on your career so far? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just happy to, to be in a situation I'm in, you know, playing professionally, waking up every day, getting to kick a ball around. You know, it's every ki little kid's dream. So... I just look at it as a blessing, um, you know, experiencing the things that I've I've been through, you know, 
even like you said, I played in Estonia last year. I never would have thought ever that I would play professional football in Estonia. So, But it was a great experience. And like I said, now hopefully I can just settle down and, you know, you know, just become a, a, a Sligo player. I'm very happy here. And, you know, my goal is to stay here for, for as long as I can. Yeah. How have you found playing in the League of Ireland so far? How does it compare to the other places that you've played in as well? And it's been a mixed start for, for Sligo. It's, you know, been a couple of, of difficult results and a couple of good results as well. And I suppose it's a new manager, lots of new players from, you know, varying backgrounds as we've spoken about as well. So be hopeful, I'm sure, to try and pick up some more points in the coming weeks. But how have you found things so far? No, I've enjoyed it. It's a competitive league and, you know, it's testing me as a player. So that's always what any player should want. So I'm, I'm very happy that I'm in a situation now that, you know, I can test myself every, every weekend. You never have an easy game, you know. So that's also, you know, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you professional. And, um, yeah, I, I, I really, I'm really happy with my decision, you know, to come to come here. And, you know, you have England, Scotland, that, around Ireland as well so you never know what can happen but uh you know I it's a it's a very good league I would say you know very it's the most competitive league I've been in so I think that's a compliment to the league as well and they have great fans you know that's one thing I've learned you have very 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 good fans and um you know I know it's tough that you know some of the things like midweek games and things of that nature but you still have fans coming out and supporting so you know credit to them yeah there's been some really good attendances since you've you've come to the league Dante the attendances across the border up which is a great time for you I, I suppose to join as well had you ever been to Ireland before you joined and how are you finding living in the Sligo area as well it's a really really nice part of the world as well no nah, I, ha- I had not been to Ireland um, obviously I was in England so I, I was I would have figured it would be the same, but it's you know it's still sort of different. Now I, I really enjoy Sligo. The, the people are very friendly, and obviously being a football town, you know when you're winning and doing well, you know it's a it's a buzz around the town. So, you know I hope to help to create that. You know win some more games, have a good season, and and see where we can go from there. Yeah, and are you living in this Sligo area with some other players? Are you living on your own? And how have you found like, like living in the area as well? Because I know even the manager, Liam Buckley, is, has an apartment there. He, he's from up here in Dublin, but he's there a lot of the week as well, And as are most of the players. Yeah, I have a couple. Yeah, I have roommates. I'm staying with Mitch Beanie, who was at Chelsea, Lewis Banks, and Sam Ward. We have a nice little house uh, close to the town as well. So, uh, you know, that's very good. You know, very good lads, you know. They supported me as well, sending me messages after the game. And, you know, the whole team, you know, it's just a good group of guys. Um, but, you know, I'm enjoying Sligo. I don't I don't really like big cities anyway. So, you know, to have, you know, a nice little town where everything, everything is close and, you know, accessible is, is good for me. Yeah, and we've had a theme on this podcast in recent weeks, Dante, of footballers looking after themselves. Are you a chef? Are you able to cook? What's the what's the, the main meal on the menu in the in the Sligo Rovers footballers house? Uh, to be honest, I can't really cook. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, the guys take care of me, and you know, when my girlfriend comes, she definitely makes sure I eat properly. But um, you know, I can I can cook the regular things, spaghetti and and meat sauce, and you know. The eggs and all that type of stuff, but I'm not a chef, not at all. <laughs> so you're telling me that Big Mitch Beanie is your uh, is your, is your cook? You there, Dante? Have we lost you? Oh, there, yeah, you're still there. Yep. So yeah, he, you're uh, you're, you're here, de- you are demanding the big goalkeeper to be demanded to cook your meals. Yeah, he, now he takes care of me for sure. He can cook, so uh, I'm grateful. <laughs> nice and just on a serious note the fact that there's so many different types of people now in that Sligo dressing room you mentioned the people you're living with and the experiences they've had some local players some other players who've played in, in other parts of the world and in the League of Ireland here how is the group itself and I know we said results haven't been brilliant so far but just you know being able to bond together and, and I'm sure Liam and, and the coaches staff there are still trying to work on, on, on that team collective as such yeah like I said uh, you know it's a very very good group and like you said you know, players coming from all over the world, you know, me from Bermuda, Jamaica, you know, you have guys um, who have rounds, but everyone's friendly, everyone looks out for each other, and I think everyone, you know, we all want to have the same goal, and that's to be successful with Sligo, so 
Um, you know, we work hard. Training is very intense. You know, you see the, you know, people competing for spots, which is good. Um, and we, I think we just need a bit more time to gel and get, you know, the, philosophy, the coach's philosophy and, and to, to put that onto the pitch. But I think you can, I think uh, being an underdog is, is good for us, you know, a bit less pressure. The fans just want us to work hard and, and to, to try our best. But I think the results will come. Yeah, and you'd be hopeful to have a result this Friday, Dante, away to a kind of local match. I know your geography of the area, your knowledge will probably be brilliant just yet, but you're heading up there to the Ryan McBride Brandywell to play against Derry City. We're speaking on, on Wednesday, so that there's one training day to go before that game. And having yourself been away for a couple of weeks, I'm sure you're anxious to get back, hopefully be in the team on, on Friday and, and help your team pick up three points. Yeah, 100%. You know, um, I'm just I'm buzzing to get back amongst the boys and to get that feeling back with the club and, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, I'm fit and I'm ready to go. I feel good. So, you know, I'm, I'm available for selection, but, you know, whatever the coach decides, you know, you have to respect that. So, you know, uh, three points is a must, I believe, and get the season back on track after uh, the last loss for Shamrock Rovers. Tante, finally, how famous are you in Sligo given that you were the Bermuda captain and you've just led them to glory? Surely you're, you're going around signing autographs and kissing babies and everything. <laughs> uh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the fans, even, you know, on social media, they congratulate me and stuff like that. So, you, you know, that's just a good feeling as well to have such support. And I appreciate them as well. So, shout out to them, the Sligo fans. I'll see you guys on Friday. Great stuff. Dante Everett, thanks a million for your time. The best of luck on Friday. Well done again on qualifying for the Gold Cup with Bermuda. And I'm sure we might try and speak to you again across the summer when that competition is taking place. Thanks a million. Okay, thanks, Jamie.